Hello, my name is Urs Eppelt. I'm responsible for mathematical modeling and numerical simulation at the Cahir Munich facilities. And I will give you a presentation about simulation-based process development for laser processing with ultra-short pulses. Let's start. First, let me introduce you to Coherent. Coherent is a laser company that is working on these four core markets, microelectronics, material processing, instrumentation, and research. Where this presentation will be addressing the first of these two. These two markets is where Korean Munich, located in Gilching, is offering subsystems as well as complete turnkey systems for laser mach micro machining. In the field of microelectronics, our applications cover everything from cutting of semi transparent materials over marking up to welding. As an example for the simulation work in these fields, you can see the simulation of an elongated focus caustic for glass cutting on the right. The field of laser material processing is covering all sorts of welding applications, cutting and drilling applications, and it's also accompanied by corresponding simulation work for these applications. In today's presentation, I would like to present three exemplary use cases for the application of modeling and simulation techniques for laser process development. These use cases to be discussed are glass cutting, stand cutting, and black marking. As you can already see by the process-related pictures shown here for each of the applications, all of these processes exhibit the formation of typical structures forming during the laser processing, which is especially typical for laser micromaterial processing. The task for modeling and simulation here is to predict these structures, which may be either essential or, on the contrary, rather detrimental to the process. Ultra-short pulsed applications typically include the formation of self-organizing structures on the free surfaces or interfaces and nonlinearities. Usually, multiphysics is involved as simulation comprises the optics as well as the continuum physics for the workpiece. It is easy to see that it's leading to high numerical complexity, and as we are dealing with cutting edge technology, for example, the use of specific optics for each process, it makes up for quite a challenge on the numerical part. The first use case I want to mention in the context of simulation-based process development is our smart cleave glass cutting process. That is based on the formation of filaments inside the glass volume. The cut contour is achieved with a curtain of single filaments that are placed in equal distances. After that processing, you can break the glass along the contour very easily, in some cases with the help of an additional heat source. Modeling this process, you need a mathematical model of the nonlinear beam propagation in this case. The model includes effects like plasma absorption, plasma defocusing, and cell focusing. And each of these phenomena is represented by corresponding terms in the governing equation. As filament optics are special optics that do not create an elementary Gaussian beam, you need to describe the free space propagation as well before you come to the actual process simulation inside the glass volume. The intensity field of the free propagating beam as well as the electron density generated by the beam inside the material are shown here. Now we have a more detailed look on the electron density distribution inside the material and see how voids are formed by each pulse along the filament line that ultimately lead to an easy cleaving along the cut contour. Varying the focal position of the incoming beam, it is shown how the filament follows this focal position. The fine structure of the filamentation can be simulated as well as you can see here. Although some of the structure that we can see in the SEM image on the left is due to the uneven fracture surface that cuts a perfect cylinder at different radius positions. There are optical effects that actually lead to a pinching of the radiation field as shown on the right. Here's a kind of a success story for simulation-based process development, in which we achieve to cut glass with rough entry surfaces, for example drawn glass that usually has a certain roughness on the surface that makes it difficult to be cut by filamentation cutting. We had a look at the problem that goes along with the rough beam entry surface and found the filament is actually disintegrating shortly after the entry, which is the reason that initially we had very little filamentation inside the kind of glass. But with successive improvements of optical measures, we are, were able to overcome that problem almost completely, which was enough reason for us to apply for a patent. 
So here you can see one example where modeling and simulation was essential in order to develop a process, laser process for a certain kind of material from scratch. The next application to be investigated here is microcutting of small tubes, especially medical stents. There is a phenomenon that you observe when you reach out for the cutting limit of any stent cutting machine, for example by increasing the feed speed above a certain limit. You will observe that the cutting curve is not open but blocked by the debris, which is called dust blade. Optimal debris ejection is obviously key to this process, and this is a perfect for an evaluation with the help of modeling and simulation. The simulation of this ultra-short pulse cutting process shows the ejection of molten material from the cutting front, and it also reveals what happens with the debris after it has separated from the cutting curve. First, the ultra-short pulse creates a big chunk of material that, if too large, gathers up in the wake of the cutting curve and forms the dust blade. Also, the simulation explains the feather-like structures of debris formed on the cutting edge. Still pictures of the video even show it more clearly that the separation process of the debris into smaller elongated droplets is responsible for the feather-like structures. Looking at the standard nozzle flow, it becomes apparent that there's not enough time for the nozzle flow to act upon the heavy debris, at least not in this configuration shown here. Although the process gas flow can drive smaller debris out of the curve, it is not possible for the flow to enter the curve in the face of major evaporation from the ablation front. The conclusions to be drawn from the stent cutting simulation are that the cutting limit is manifesting in almost solid debris coming out of the cutting front, which is difficult to eject above a certain speed. And that is frankly quite unexpected for an ultra-short pulse process. Second is the mystery of structures that form on the cutting edge, which can easily be explained by the shattering of this debris into smaller elongated droplets, just like in the finger formation in a running fin, for example. And third and probably most important is the nozzle flow that is effectively acting only on smaller debris chunks. All this sets the scene for further process optimization, as it is clear that the nozzle flow and the laser pulse have to work together to achieve the best result possible. The last example for the use of modeling and simulation in the context of laser applications is the formation of laser-induced periodic surface structures, so-called LIPS, that occur in black marking of medical instruments, for example. The laser black marking process does work by two separate mechanisms that are shown here on this slide. The first one is via oxidation. By heating the material up, the laser creates an oxide layer that is, for most metals, of a dark color and the reflection for all visible wavelengths goes down depending on the thickness of the layer. This can be shown easily by a functional simulation that simulates the function, in this case reflection degree, of the workpiece after laser processing. You get a qualitatively black surface when you reach about 10% reflection degree. The other mechanism is based on the elimination of reflection by structure which is, for example, known from the moth eye structure. And indeed, functional simulation again shows that this mechanism is decreasing the reflection significantly if the structure has the right shape. Dealing with the second mechanism that involves structure formation, it is easily to show and see how this is actually happening. Starting with a rough surface, either from the last pulse or any initial surface roughness, we see that the absorbed energy is concentrating in the valleys of the roughness, and that states a feedback loop that intensifies this structure further and further. Here you can see the effect on a specially 2D simulation. On the left, the view is emphasized on the material side, on the right, the radiation part is pronounced. And if we can do this in two dimensions, we can also do it in three dimensions. The result shows a significant comparison between the structures formed in the simulation and those that we can see in the real world. It even goes down to the fine structure in these lips, which were thought to be debris that was redeposited on the surface. But now we can see that this is actually part of the structure forming in this process. Just to give you an impression how the simulation domain meshing looks like in 3D. An adaptive meshing technique is coming handy to resolve the structure that wants to form and that may also be the 
key to cover the st fine structure of the lips that we just saw. Coming to another success story where modeling and simulation could shine. We took what we learned from the simulation of structure formation on surfaces and tried to influence this formation to actually stress and pronounce the blackening mechanism by structure. Because the structure offers a benefit that oxidation cannot offer and that is acid resistance. So usually if you put a standard black marking into an acid bath, you see after a few days already that the marking disappears, which is of course undesirable for household items, so-called white goods, like your stove at home for example. But with our improved nanostructure we were able to significantly improve the acid resistance and the picture shows quite impressively that you could still read the marking on your stove with this technique even after many swipes of acid cleaning agents. This brings me to a summary of the presentation in which I showed you several examples for use cases of modeling and simulation in an industrial context. From an academic point of view these examples exhibit the formation of microstructures due to the interaction of the radiation field with the material. From a more practical point of view, for industrial users, the examples show that modeling and simulation is applicable and useful and a suitable means for achieving the necessary process understanding for laser process development. After all, we think that the techniques are especially suitable for smaller companies where a large diagnostic apparatus is not always present. Finally, I would like to thank you for your attention and interest in this presentation and wish you all the best from all of us here at Coherent Munich.